We're going to be looking at doing a retrofit kit of the A1400 kit into this existing operator. The first thing we're going to do is remove all the existing equipment. One of the main features of the A1400 retrofit kit is its energy saving and the ability to fit it to most 100mm profile headers. And it is also compliant to EN16005 straight out of the box with a quick and easy installation method. It also includes a program selector and has the capability of handling up to a weight of 200 kilos for a single leaf. The first thing you need to do is to remove any of the existing electronic components, uh, such as the existing control board, power supplies, the motor and gearboxes, and the return pulleys from your existing header to allow you to inspect the space you have available for you. You then remove any existing belt clamps that are holding the existing belt system in place. This will leave you with your casual assemblies exposed. In this particular example, we have mounting holes already pre-drilled into the existing casual assemblies for us to be able to use to mount our own casual adapters we need for our, from our kit. If these holes were not available, you would need to obviously drill and tap the holes that you'd be using for your existing casuals, which might make the process a bit more complicated. Please note that one of the casual brackets will be facing down on the left hand side and the bracket on the right hand side, if it is a bypassing door, will then be on the top side on the rear of the casual assembly as shown in the video. Attach your brackets in the best method possible, ensuring they are securely fixed to the existing casual assemblies. Essentially you need to have approximately 100mm from the face of the mounting plate at the back to where the cover will be in order to allow everything to go through. The first bracket we're putting up is where the motor will be mounted to. In this particular case, we're able to reuse the existing slide channels. Alternatively, you would essentially just mark the holes and drill all the way through and use the screws provided to secure the bracket in place. Once the bracket is in the correct location, you then mount the motor into place by using the fixings provided and making sure that the door is able to go past and not catch any of the motor sections with the casual assemblies. You then do the same process for the control board. In this particular case, we're able to just reuse these actual existing slides. We didn't actually need to use our packers. Mount the return pulley. Again, making sure that it's lined up with the motor pulley and making sure that everything clears it. Fit the supplied battery backup. Again, making sure that the door will not catch the back of it. And begin plugging the system in. All the cables are molded to fit in only one particular place. Make sure all the cables are tidied up and they're out of the way. In this particular case, we actually discovered we needed to put a small extensions on the back of the carriage wheels. So again, you might need to make sure that everything is correct. Once you are in, then fit the tension on the belt. In this area here is where we can have an electric lock fitted if it is required. Just make sure that if you do fit an electric lock, that you do need to have the system powered down completely before connecting it. This is the powering up sequence. On first power up of the unit, the unit will flash and it will then display the firmware version of the control board. The board will then go on to display LO, which is essentially just a board telling you that it requires a new setup. There are some lights that will come on to start with. The first one will be the error light, it's basically saying I am still new, I'm not ready to run yet. And you also have on there the SIC close, which is essentially it's safety in closing. It's not active at the moment, hence why they've got the red lights on there, because we haven't wired anything in there yet. The system does allow it to run a setup without it being attached. There are three buttons on the E1SL control board, a plus, minus and an F. The F button is the one that essentially goes through all the different parameter lists. The first parameter is the back-to-back -back Cs, 
which is ready for Simply Connect. We will then have a video showing how to do Simply Connect at the later stage. The next parameter is CF. This is where we now select what we have attached to the system. In essence, there are five different settings. You have setting number one for A1000, setting number two for A1400, setting number three for the RKE hermetic door setup, number four is for the bifolding doors, and number five is for the balance doors. In this particular case, this is an A1400 retrofit kit, so we set it to two. Next parameter is default. Essentially, it will say yes when we first go through the system. The moment we change anything later on any parameters, the system will automatically change this value to no. If you wanted to revert back to default settings, then you need only to change that back to a Y. The next parameter is RN, for rotation direction. Essentially, you shouldn't have to change this parameter, but if you've got your carriage wheels the wrong way around, all you need to do is change this parameter from a 1 to a minus 1 and then rerun the setup. The next parameter is PO for partial opening. Essentially, in winter mode, how far does the door open when uh, set to winter? In this case, it's set at 50%. It's adjustable from um, 10 to 90. The next one is PA, which is pause time. Default is set to 2 seconds. You adjust this pause time up and down as you require going from a zero, so the door will open completely, and then close, and then going all the way up to four minutes and 10 seconds. In this particular case, we've adding it for five seconds due to the traffic that will be traveling through. The next parameter is ES for energy saving. This will allow the unit to not have to do a complete cycle if it only has a transient activation, such as somebody walking past the door but not actually going into the door. The rest of our competitor systems, they will essentially receive that as a signal and the door would open all the way fully regardless if somebody was traveling through the door or not. The next parameter is PN for pause time at night. So the default is set to 10 seconds. Just to allow if you have a access control system and you want to put it into a different mode at different times of the day, you can have a different pause time to what it is under normal activation. The next parameter is CS for closing speed. Default is set to 5 for the A1400. You can adjust this up and down from 1 to 10, 10 being fastest, 1 being the slowest. In general terms, we can leave this at the default setting and you can adjust at your own customer's requirements. The next parameter is OS for opening speed. Default is set to 8. Again, it goes 1 low, 10 high. You can adjust this accordingly. The next one is CF closing force. This is the force that the system will apply automatically before reversing. Default is set to 5. The next parameter is OF for opening force. It is set from 1 to 10. In this particular case, we have it set to number 8. We have TF, which is time for force. Essentially, this is how long the unit will push against an obstacle. It is set to 1.0 by default. Please note, if you do set the unit in low energy mode, you do need to have this figure down below 0.7. The next parameter is DR. This is deceleration ramp. It's essentially how fast the unit slows down from a one to 10 value, six being a medium fast. The next parameter is AR for acceleration ramp instead. It works in exactly the same method as the deceleration ramp with the setting of one to 10. We then have the configurable inputs, C1 for input one, as shown on J21. It re represents I1. These are configurable. They do come preset as required to have a internal, external, a key command functionality. And you can adjust these as if you wish. You then get an ST, which is where you save your parameters. Once you have a Y, you can let go. If you wanted to change anything, you could change that to a no and it will revert all your settings that you may have changed. Once you have it back on LO on the screen, you're now ready to run the setup. The best method to check the doors running the right way is first, bring the doors to a halfway position and then hold the setup button down until you see the display changing from the L0 to an L1. L1, basically the door should start closing. 
If the door was opening on the L1, then switch the power off and change the RM parameter and go back through. L2 is the door opening. Once the door finds its open position, the display will automatically change from L2 to 0, 03 and the door will stay in that position until a closing safety is re-engaged. Once you've run the setup, you can now install your activation and your threshold safety devices and opening safety devices as you required. If you are using FAC branded safety devices and activation devices such as the XDT1 for a combined activation and threshold safety and the XBFA for opening safety, all you simply need to do is follow the instruction provided in the manual. Thank you for your time.